Okay, so today I'm here to talk to you about the Enlightenment desktop. Um, so firstly, a quick little bit about me. Um, I've been working for CESA for a year. I, um, I've also been the maintainer on a, of Enlightenment on OpenCESA for five-ish years maybe I've been helping with that. And it got to the point, I started out just helping someone else, occasionally updating versions of packages. And then I took over doing all the work. And then I ended up being the upstream release manager for some things as well. And so I'm reasonably involved in the project, although I don't write a lot of code. So a bit of history about Enlightenment. Enlightenment is one of the oldest desktops in existence. It was first released in 1997 which is around similar time to the early GNOME and KDE. Um, in 2000, Raster, the main author, decided that to get it to really do what he wanted from what he had learnt in making the first 16 versions, he basically had to start again from scratch, which, which took just a little bit of time and 12 years later we had another release. Um, but through that time there was, it was still usable and um, since 2012 there's been quite regular releases. Um, it's now maintained mostly by Samsung employees because they use it in Tizen, which is their operating system for TVs and smartwatches and things like that. So I think I said in my presentation outline thing that Enlightenment is probably the most used Linux desktop because it appears on every Samsung TV sold in the last year, year or two and every Samsung smartwatch. So there's quite a lot of things out there using Enlightenment, you just may not realise it. Um, so why should you consider using Enlightenment? Well firstly, it's extremely light, lightweight. I have no problems running it on a Raspberry Pi or a seven or eight year old laptop. Um, it can also look rather pretty if you do it right. Um, it's very flexible, so it could also look quite ugly if you go the other way. Um, and I like to think of Enlightenment as the choose your own adventure desktop. I don't know if you ever had choose your own adventure books, but Enlightenment is the choose your own desktop, adventure desktop, because there are other desktops, say maybe GNOME, where the developers very much have a strict a way that they think you should use their operating system. Windows is similar. And if you try to do things outside of that, it is quite hard and sometimes impossible. Whereas Enlightenment has a billion and fifty configuration options and you can't get your head around it all in one sitting. And so if you're ever to try Enlightenment, what I would suggest you do is you start out you play with some settings, you use it for a week, you see what's working for you, you see what's not, then you start to tweak some more settings. And for me, I think the first time I started using Enlightenment, that process took three or four months. But now, because I'm the OpenSUSE maintainer, I can create a profile that says OpenSUSE Enlightenment Desktop. And if you click that in the first run wizard, you will get my default settings, which means I don't have to remember all those settings to change, I just get my desktop every time. Um, so, yeah. All right, and I guess we will come a bit to some demos in a sec. Um, so, Enlightenment is very themable, so we'll start there. One of the downsides of it being so themable is that to write a, the Enlightenment theme, it is, I think, probably at least a million lines of styling code, which means you can do everything, but it takes a long time to do it, and so not many people have, but here is Enlightenment. This is the default upstream theme. Um, if we don't open the settings because it's nice when you find a bug in the live demo. So. Enlightenment has this nice grey look by default. In OpenCSA we have customised that a bit and 
um, the leap at least, it looks like not that. Um, there you go. For leap, it looks like this. It's a bit darker. It's green if I set the wallpaper back. So this is enlightenment as you would see it if you were to use it on Leap or equally if you were to use it on Tumbleweed because I don't think I wrote a separate Tumbleweed theme yet. Um, but alongside that in OpenSUSE we also ship um, some other themes. There is this theme here which if you've been using OpenSUSE for a while that was a earlier theme and then we can go back I think even th further and to here and because people like these old themes I keep them in optional optional packages and you can use them if you want I also do some theme work on my spare time and so here is one that is very much a work in progress but sort of close to done, then if you like Windows 7 and using a bit more CPU power, you can have these nice fancy ones with blurs and shading. Um, as you can see, there's obviously parts of this theme that I haven't finished yet. All right. <coughs> and I was saying with Enlightenment, you can go a bit too far and a bit crazy uh, for everyone's enjoyment. Here is a fun wallpaper that everyone has always wanted ever. <laughs> I don't know who made that or why they made that, but it uses a significant amount of your CPU. And so you probably don't want to use it normally. So I guess something I forgot to touch on is why I started using Enlightenment. Back around 2010, when GNOME 2 was still around, I used to use GNOME 2 and I would run an X server for each screen, which meant I couldn't drag applications from one screen to the other screen. But when I changed virtual desktops on one screen, the second screen would stay where it was. If I changed my virtual desktop on the second screen, the first one would stay where it was. and for me, that was really useful because like, if I'm sitting at home, I will have my laptop here, but I'll also have a bigger monitor plugged in. And generally, I want to keep my IRC client or some other application just sitting on one screen while I swap between the editor and my mail client and everything else. And so for me, that is why I started using Enlightenment. It's why I still use it because GNOME and KDE don't think that's a good idea. I don't think you should be able to do that. Um, so the Enlightenment project is bigger than just a desktop. They produce some other applications I've listed here. Um, so I think we will have a quick look at its terminal. So this is terminology. It is Enlightenment's terminal. It can do everything your normal terminal would do. You can split things in many different ways. But unlike most of the other terminals with these features, this terminal is still really fast. It's as fast, if not faster, than the next term. And if you have an application that's outputting a thousand or ten thousand lines to your console every second, how fast your terminal can display those lines has an implication on how long it takes to do things. Um, but then, on top of that, they take things to another level, as they like to do.
So if I go to a directory with lots of images in it, I can do ls, but that's not telling me much. That's not very useful. You can see some files, but if I do ty ls, you get nice little previews when they come up. Sometimes, if I haven't broken it. All right, I'm going to try that again because I think I changed the text font and that probably broke it. Here we go. So, tyls, ls with image previews that you can click on and these are all very small images but being able to use an image is cool and nice but what if you wanted to watch a video in your terminal? That's something people want to do all the time, right? Uh. So, we also have TY cap. I have some pictures in here, you can also, cat a picture if you want to look at it in a bigger size. But not only can you cat pictures, you can take a video of one of the funniest bugs I've seen in a while, and you can watch a video in your terminal. Now, you may ask, why would you include a feature such as this, as this in your terminal emulator? Well, if you're a younger desktop environment and you don't have many applications and you want to test your video, video playing library, but all you've got is a terminal emulator, you may as well make the terminal play videos. But in these days, these days um, they also have a mplayer-like clone but in the typical enlightenment way, it is much prettier. It's called Rage. So you can see it's got some nice pretty looking bits. Um, but other than that, it's just like mPlayer. You can use a GStreamer or a VLC backend and So that's fun. Um, so another application that I use a lot that isn't part of the Enlightenment project, but it works with Enlightenment and it works with many other desktops is a program called Variety. Now you may have noticed that as we've been going, my wallpaper has been changing every few minutes. I don't like the same wallpaper all the time. Neither do some other people, so they wrote this program called Variety. And I'll show you what it is. It runs in your SysTray. You get a bunch of different sources from over the internet, and you can configure it in such a way that it will download you a new wallpaper from one of those places every 10 minutes, and it will also change your wallpaper every five minutes. So. At the moment, I just have my favourites on. And so the internet has found me all these wallpapers once. And so that will, I believe that still runs with GNOME, KDE, whichever desktop environment. If you like lots of wallpapers, Variety is a program for you. Where are we at? So, I'm going to jump around a little bit, but before I said Enlightenment had lots of settings, so here is all the settings panes. So I have I have mine in a very non-blingy configuration because too many animations are annoying. But if I add it to everything, then 
now we start getting funky animations when you minimize and maximize and all those things you could want to do. Wobbly Windows Enlightenment was the only desktop that has implemented Wobbly Windows on the Wayland. But since then, they it was done using a bunch of hacks in someone's spare time. And since then, they have decided it's not quite stable and suitable for everyday inclusion, so it's been disabled for now. But there is not Wobbly Windows at the moment, but I always found Wobbly Windows annoying. Um, well, I'm going to set that back to less annoying mode, maybe. Um, so, from Enlightenment, you can also set your theme for your GDK applications. You can set your icon theme. As you can see, I have 50 billion because one of the things you find that when you work on themes all the time, it gets to a point where you just don't care what your desktop looks like because it's always broken. And so that is what I have a bit of today. Um, some of the other cool things you can do is you can configure your startup applications. So you can automatically launch any application at startup. Um, so, for example, I have Synergy sitting up here because I use it at home and so that just starts automatically. But I could then decide that I want it to start here and so I can set up something called a window remember and so I can remember its size and position and now it will always start there for me out the way. And you can do far more than that. Um, if you like desktop gadgets, Enlightenment has a few but not a large number and so what I've done in the past is you take an application like Conky and I can go, well, I want it to sit here. I want it to use a different border. At the risk of eating on my CPU, I'm going to try and use a blurred border. I picked the wrong one. Or you can select to have no border. Um, I think that's the one I wanted. So now all my controls are gone, I can then I have just stuffed up and done that in completely the wrong order. Now that I don't have the window border, I can't change the rest of the window properties, but we can just we will make a oh, and as is bound to happen, I have started using too much CPU and one of the nice things about alignment is if it crashes, you can just restart it and everything will be as it was. Sometimes. Uh, let's take a quick break. And either I don't remember my password. Oh, there we go. So 
you can see that Synergy now started. Oh, it's not started there this time, but. So as you can see, Enlightenment still has some rough edges occasionally. It's maybe not for anyone, everyone, but it's really targeting the power users who want to be able to do everything and anything. So let's, let's try this demo again. So this time, if I make it sticky, see it's on, it's on all, all the windows. I've also set up the window hints for Conkey so that it doesn't show up in my taskbar or in a bunch of other places where you list the windows. And so by changing the border here, we now have what you might consider the equivalent of a desktop gadget in other um, distro in other desktops. I also used to have a script f for showing uh, photos in a photo frame using FET. It was a similar concept. How are we doing for time? All right, so we'll come back for our walk through the settings. Um, one thing Enlightenment does really well is handling multiple monitors. I plug, moni I plug my HDMI port in and out of this all the time at home. Everything just works and is wonderful. So you can see, you can go through. There are several different ways you can choose how your windows are focused. There is settings for everything you could want and probably more. There is an extensive list of things you can create as key bindings. And so, and Enlightenment works off a um, modular system, so if you want your system to be even faster, you can go through, find all the modules you don't want to use and disable them. I think I have a pretty default list at the moment. Um, all right, so I think I'll probably leave it there. Is there any questions? Uh, much better. Much, much better. Um, probably more on par with XFCE, LXDE. I have for a number of years before I started working at SUSE. My laptop was eight years old. I did all my work on it. Enlightenment ran fine. I have a question regarding runner. Uh, does it support uh, context search? I mean, if you type uh, editor, will it show you at atom, for example? Um, not at the moment, no. No. Because mm -hmm. Um, Enlightenment hasn't hooked into the new fancy app data thing everyone else is using for their package managers yet, and so it doesn't have the way to pull that data out. It just looks at desktop files. Mm -hmm. Just for me, KRunner is the only thing which holds me on KDE. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just. Yeah, so anyone else? Uh, I'm interested in uh, hibernation. Is it working with uh, out of the box or do we have to somehow hack it? Um, last time I used it, it was working out of the box. At the moment it is disabled and so I think that is more to do with my system configuration and um, not having a swap petition and things like that. Uh, what about the integration in the OpenSUSE ecosystem, like OpenQA? Is there, are there any tests? There uh, is a limited number of tests that I am working on adding more to, but we have a basic um, startup, open a terminal, and things like that. But there certainly could be 
many more tests. And um, as you can see, my package indicator icon here, um, that's integrated into package kit and we'll, you can press a button if you have updates and it'll launch Yast for you to install those updates. So there is some integration there and we have several fix, um, patches for the first run wizard that make more sense for OpenSUSE because we have some things pre-configured that other distros don't and so we don't need to ask you again. All right, next. Are you keeping on track between the builds for the different architectures? So, for instance, with ARM and x86, etc. cetera, or, or I, is that working? I try to. I have done a better job in the past of doing it, but certainly I have had it running on ARM systems, and it has run on ARM systems, and it does build sometimes on ARM systems. Other, day, other days I look in OBS at the ARM build, and it's got 500 unresolved dependencies, and I went, go okay, well. I can't do much about that today. But yes, we try and fix ARM specific issues and we've upstreamed a couple of patches for ARM. Cool. Um, you said that Samsung is currently co contributing a lot into Enlightenment, uh, but how it works? Uh, does they do delicate? direct pull request to some project or it's some kind of upstream and they share it with open source community just a part of their uh, work? So Samsung's approach to their open source software stack I've been told is much of we will take the contributors and we will the main contributors and we will pay them to keep doing what they are doing because they know what's best for the project and so cool. there is four or five Samsung developers who are regularly committing into the upstream enlightenment and its libraries um, rep repositories. But then I think they also have an internal branch for Tizen that they try and merge and do things with, with extra developers. Thanks. Are there uh, desktop themes that are not black on black? Um, I, I mean, it, it seems very, very popular with all desktops to only have black background with slightly less black scripture, but I, yeah, something like that would be a nice theme, for um, example. Yes, there is, and I think I, I think I briefly showed one, but... Yeah. Because it's actually what I despise about GNOME, because you, there's only the black theme and all the others are broken. And <laughs> And not not broken that the colors are not correct, that they're actually unusable because GNOME, the theme actually is code apparently. So that's. Yep. Um, is this the same with Enlightenment or is it really just a, a file where colors are defined which you can change without breaking the desktop? Because, because the theme is so big into the millions of lines of code, when you do make a light theme, it is something that'll work and fits perfectly. I'll show you that in a minute. But before we do, I get the choice chance to show you this enlightenment has crashed, which is mostly due to my theme. Now, when you have a desktop that you've run from Git for 12 years, it crashes occasionally. And so it's nice when your desktop crashes to be able to press a recover button and enlightenment comes back, all your applications are where they were and everything keeps working normally. Now let's see if I can open the menu without. So obviously the theme that I've landed on is a development one that's pushing the systems a bit further. So here is, so here is one of the lighter Much things. Nicer. Thanks. And is it is it actually the the theming like in GNOME where it's a, a code that this needs to be maintained, or is it just a theming? Is just a configuration file where the colors are defined and not everything else? Um, it is a full blown, lots of lines of. Okay, so actually there's there's also the chance like in GNOME that you change the theme, that you just want to change the colors and nothing works anymore. No, there's, you can, if you just change the colors, I've got most of the themes I've made are scripts that just change the colors okay. and then I go through and tweak some other things. But if we say, have a look here. As you can guess from my questions, I had quite some, some pain with other desktop environments. So. 
I think we are short on time. But, um, <laughs> That's fine. The, f the, file manager th the file manager theme, which we will open quickly, and then I will run away. Uh, well, I will show you afterwards. It's probably 2,000 plus lines of code, so you can do everything with it. All right, thank you guys.